Hey there, I'm Jerry, a DIY track guy, and does your 30-year-old Miata experience random stalling issues? Mine does. Let's see if we can't fix that. Ever since I got this car back in 2016, it's had this pretty annoying stalling issue. Usually it manifests as a hard start or a start stall condition, or weirdly, sometimes it die when I put it in reverse. Stupidly, I thought there was something wrong mechanically, like with the motor or fueling system, but after I engine swapped the car, watch those videos up here, the problem persisted. It wasn't until I took the car to Kevin, the dyno tuner, and he quickly suggested that there was likely a problem with the ignition switch. So with that big clue, let's try to fix this thing in under two minutes. Please like, subscribe, comment, share the channel. Thanks. And what do we mean by a start stall condition? Well, let me show you. <laughs> and of course it's not doing it. Well, trust me, it doesn't work like this all the time. To replace the ignition switch, the first thing we gotta do is cut power to the car by disconnecting the battery. Luckily, I have a post-mounted disconnect switch tucked back there. You can get them from your local General Automotive or Marine supplier, or just order it from Amazon for less than $10. Back over here at the steering column, we're looking at these plastic bits again. In the last flash to pass video where we installed that diode to make the pop-ups do fun stuff, we removed the exact same steering column plastics. In case you missed it, we need to remove three Phillips head fasteners under here. And of course, I made the same mistake as last time and forgot the last fastener deeply recessed at the back. And now the two halves can be separated. Unlike last time, we need to remove the knee panel just under the steering column, and there's a couple of Phillips head fasteners at the bottom. Now we can get a good look at the lock cylinder. The key goes in here, and this is the ignition switch unit we gotta remove. Thankfully, it's just held in by one Phillips head fastener, but it's kind of in an awkward spot, which is why we remove the plastics to give us more room to work with. I have this small ratcheting style bit driver thing that's surprisingly useful, and it's perfect for this application. And once we get the screw out, the ignition switch slides right out. Then we just need to disconnect the plastic connector on the back to remove it. Of course, you could have done this before removing the switch. And here we are with a brand new OEM Mazda ignition switch side by side with the old one. Besides being severely yellowed and one of the tabs sliding off, overall the old one looks pretty good for 34 years. Now we can take our brand new OEM Mazda ignition switch unit, plug the connector in, slide it into the back of the lock cylinder, and run in that screw. This is surprisingly simple, and it makes me wonder if we just figured out how to hotwire a Miata. Hmm. And before we button everything back up, let's give it a go to make sure the car starts. Huzzah! Great success! Now, this part's optional, but there's something else I want to replace that's located in the engine bay fuse box, and it can also be a source of stalling issues. Popping open the cover, we locate the large black module over here, and that is the main relay, or ignition relay. Its job is to supply power to many things that draw ignition power. Fuel pump, fuel injectors, and anything you've hooked up to that handy white and red striped wire in the interior. It simply pulls out like this, and here's what it looks like. Since this is a 1990 MX-5 Miata, this is the original Denso B6S8 relay that's found in 90 to 96 Miatas. And here's the upgraded 80 amp JE16 replacement relay that I purchased from my local Mazda dealership for about $170 Canadian, but Flying Miata sells it for $109 US. These came in 96 plus Miatas and are compatible with all NA and NBs. And we just need to insert it into the fuse box where the old one was, seat it firmly, and just like that, we're good for another 34 years. But just in case it fails, let's carefully place the old one in the glove box as a spare. Let's take a quick look inside this old ignition switch because I'm a little curious what's going on in here. They say that a lot of switched ignition power goes through this thing, so if it's failing, a bunch of things could go wrong. Like your instrument cluster, radio, windows, and lights are all powered from it. And if you connect up aftermarket gauges, USB plugs, and other accessories, they're all coming through here. Prying it open, we can see that it's a mechanical component with what looks like sliding copper terminals that contact each other. Notice the dark stains or streaks on the terminals, which must be some kind of contamination or wear that was happening over the many years of service. There's even these small terminals that have some greenish moss growing on them. Like I said, it's in pretty good condition, especially considering the ones I've seen that are completely burnt out or melted. 
Check out the Miata Man YouTube channel where he's got a really informative video that goes in depth on refurbishing these things. Link in the description. Good. So I started this video saying that I've been annoyed by this problem for years and that tuner Kevin immediately suspected that ignition switch. But how did he know? Well, part of it is that he's a veteran automotive specialist, so he probably has a finely tuned gut feel for this sort of thing. But he also showed me that if he jiggled the key slightly as he turned it, the car would tend to stall. But if he held it more firmly, it would tend not to. And when it did stall, and this is the telling bit, the lights on the instrument cluster would go out. Since the ignition switch is in the key on position, everything should be getting power, but the e-brake and check engine lights weren't illuminated. So that tells us that it's an electrical issue, not a mechanical issue. So if you suspect that your ignition switch is bad, try those diagnostic steps to see if it's the same problem. If you found any of this helpful at all, please like, subscribe, comment, share, you know the deal. Until next time, you're awesome, I'm useless, thanks for watching.